Ever gone digging around in your Chrome settings? Like maybe you're trying to install a new extension and then bam, you get hit with that message that managed by your organization. Oh yeah. First time I saw that, I was like, hold on, what organization? It's definitely one of those like, wait, what moments for sure. Yeah, like have I stumbled into some like secret society I didn't know about? Right. Especially for those of us who, you know, mostly just use Chrome at home. And it's not like most of us have some IT department calling the shots on our browsing, All right. thankfully. So to get to the bottom of this whole managed mystery, we're going deep on Chrome policies, like what they actually are, why that message pops up, and what it really means for you know everyday users like us. Exactly. Chrome policies, to put it simply, are a way to like preset how the browser behaves. Ah. So imagine like a school, right? They've got hundreds of computers, mm. All those computers are running Chrome, trying to make sure that all of those browsers are secure, running smoothly, and that everything's consistent. It would be. It'd be a nightmare without some central control. Oh, yeah. Complete chaos. Exactly. Total chaos. And that's exactly where those Chrome policies come in. It gives those administrators, the folks in charge of all those computers, the ability to say, OK, these websites are off limits or everybody's search engine is going to be this one. It's about like wrangling all those browsers, making yeah. sure they all play by the same rules. So it's like setting boundaries, but for browsers. Exactly. Which yeah. makes sense in those you know big settings. But when it pops up on your personal computer, your own laptop, yeah. That's when the alarm bells start going off. Absolutely. If you're just using your personal computer, seeing managed by your organization, it can be a little unnerving, but yeah. it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it really is legit. If you're using, say, a work device or a school device, it's probably just your IT department doing their thing. Right. You know, making sure everything's secure, locked down. And maybe, you know, preventing a little too much midday social media browsing. Yeah, no more scrolling through cat videos on company time. It's exactly. But what I find really interesting is that this whole managed thing, Yeah. it's not always so innocent, right? Right. There's like a darker side to these policies. You're exactly right. And this is where things get, well, a bit more interesting. Those same Chrome policies, the ones that are really helpful in the right hands. Yeah can actually be manipulated by unwanted software. Oh, so we're talking about the sneaky stuff now. Yes, we're talking about software that's designed to like tinker with your browsing experience, but not in a good way. And usually it does it without even asking you. So how do they even manage that? It's like they stage a coup, but in your browser. It's a little more uh, cunning than that. Imagine you download, I don't know what you think is a YouTube downloader, or maybe even an update for something like, you know, Flash Player. Right. Sounds innocent enough. Sounds innocent, right. Yep. But buried in all that text you scroll through when you're installing, mm. there might be a tiny little clause giving them permission to install more than what you bargained for. Oh, sneaky. And once they're in, they can use those same policies to do things like, say, change your homepage or force you to use a search engine you've never even heard of. Or worse. <laughs> I bet they could be after your data. I was actually reading something by Stefan Van Dam, you know, the Google Chrome yes, expert. Yes, yes, yeah. He created that tool to deal with this. And he was saying this is actually a really common way that the bad guys, you know, they hijack your browser. Yeah, he's definitely right. It's like they're slipping in the back door when you're not looking. It's like a digital bait and switch. Exactly. A lot of people have no idea it's even happening until it's too late. And that's why, you know, got to be on the lookout for anything fishy happening in your browser. It's not just about that managed by your organization message. Right. So that message, if you see it, it's like, OK, time to pay attention here. Exactly. But what are some of the other signs? Like, what are some of those red flags that maybe something's not quite right besides, you know, feeling like you've suddenly been recruited by some secret organization? Well, one thing you can try is go ahead and try changing your homepage. OK. Or your default search engine. And if you keep hitting a wall, yeah, like you can't change it or it seems like it's, I don't know, grayed out or something. Oh, like it's locked down. Yes, exactly. Like if somebody took away the keys, that's a big red flag. And You'll... while we're on the topic of things that feel out of your control, right? keep an eye out for extensions. Okay. Browser extensions that you don't recognize. Yeah. Especially ones you can't seem to get rid of. Ugh, yeah, it's like that unwanted house guest that just won't leave. Exactly. They just overstay their welcome. And then if you're constantly getting like redirected okay. to weird websites, ones that are just covered in ads or ones that seem totally random, another sign something's up. Think about your browser like it's your car, right? 
if it starts making weird noises or it starts pulling to one side, yeah. you don't just ignore it. No, definitely not. I'm scheduling a mechanic checkup immediately. Exactly. So if your browser is doing the digital equivalent of that, time for a checkup. So if our browser is acting up like that, can we fix it ourselves or do we need to call in like the digital equivalent of a mechanic? You can absolutely get things back under control, don't worry. And the good news is you actually have options. You can either kind of roll up your sleeves and take the manual approach. Okay. Or you can use a specialized tool. Okay, so let's break those down. What does that manual approach look like? Think of it like you're doing your own digital engine work. You know, okay. you're really getting in there, digging into system files. On Windows, you might even find yourself in the registry. Ooh, the, the registry. Yeah, that sounds a little intimidating. Yeah, it can be. It's like the master control panel for your whole Windows computer. All kinds of important settings live there. And for Mac users, we're talking like terminal commands. It's like typing code directly into your computer. Okay. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous just thinking about that. Yeah. I'm more of a, like, click the button kind of tech person, if I'm being honest. And that is totally fine. While the manual approach definitely works, it's a little, shall we say, advanced. you got to be comfortable poking around those inner workings of your computer. So proceed with caution <laughs> and maybe have, like, a tech-savvy friend on speed dial just in case. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But... Don't worry, there is a much simpler way. Okay, good. Remember Stefan Van Dam? Yeah, the Chrome guru. Our Chrome guru. Well, he actually created a tool for this very thing. It's called the Chrome Policy Remover. Okay. Think of it like your one-click solution to this whole managed problem. Okay, see, now that is much more my speed. So how does this Chrome Policy Remover, how does it actually work? It's incredibly straightforward. You download it, you run it, and then it pretty much does all the work for you. It automatically closes down your Chrome browser, it scans for any of those malicious profiles or policies, removes them, and then you just restart your browser and you're good to go. And just like that, you're back in control. It's like hitting the reset button on those unwanted settings. Exactly. It's like evicting those unwanted guests for good. I love it. And the best part, it's available for both Windows and Mac. So no matter what you're using, you've got a way to take your browser back. Music to my ears. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about how to get rid of these unwanted policies. Yeah. But let's talk about prevention for a second. Yeah. Because let's face it, nobody wants to deal with this stuff in the first place. You're telling me. Prevention is key. Right. And the great thing is Google actually has a really helpful unwanted software policy that's got some fantastic tips for dodging these bad actors altogether. Oh, that's awesome. So what are some of the key things that they recommend? What should we be watching out for? Well, a lot of it boils down to just being a more mindful downloader, yeah. you know, treating downloads with the same caution that you might, say, use when picking a new food truck. Okay, yeah. Like, if it looks a little sketchy, maybe give it a miss. So we're not downloading software from, like, the back alleys of the internet. Exactly. Stick to those well-lit streets, you know, download from official websites, reputable app stores, that sort of thing. If you're not sure about a link... Better safe than sorry, with, right? With a suspicious link. Exactly. And even if you're downloading from a place you trust, you know, a website you know, yeah. pay attention when you're actually installing it. Oh, yeah. I think we've all been there, oh, right? I, you're just clicking next, next, next. Yep, just get to the good part. You just want to get to the good stuff. Yep. But we've got to break that habit, those installation screens. Yeah. They're not just trying to bore you with technical details. Right. They often have really important info about what you're putting on your computer. So slow down, read the fine print. It's all about being more mindful. Exactly. And here's another one. Be wary of programs that seem, I don't know, a little too good to be true. Okay. Like, are they promising to magically speed up your computer? Right. Or give you something free that normally costs money? Yeah. Approach those with a healthy dose of skepticism. Like the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true. It probably is. Words to live by. You know what? This has been really eye-opening. Good. I feel like my Chrome knowledge has officially leveled up today. <laughs> I love to hear that. It's like giving your browser a little tune-up. It really is. And, you know, while we're talking about kind of preventative maintenance for your browser, okay. there's one more thing that I think people often overlook, but it's surprisingly effective. Oh, really? What's that? Updates. Really? Keeping your browser updated. It seems too easy, right? Yeah. But those browser updates, they're not just about getting new features right. or like a new coat of paint. 
They often come with some really critical security patches. They plug up holes that the, those unwanted software folks, you know, they try to exploit those. And it's like those software updates are like little ninjas in the night. They're like mm -hmm. patching up holes in our digital walls. Exactly. Like those silent guardians working behind the scenes to keep you safe. So next time you see that notification, you know, that little pop up that's like, update your browser. Yeah. Don't hit remind me later. Don't procrastinate on those updates. Do it now. It's update time. <laughs> This has been so eye-opening. I feel like we've gone from managed by to like managed by ME. That's what we like to hear, taking back that control. Yes. Yeah. So to all of our listeners out there, if you see that managed by your organization message, it's not always time to panic. Right. But it is a good time to, you know, stop, investigate, maybe do a little digital detective work, especially if you aren't actually part of an organization that manages your device. Right. But thankfully, like we talked about, you do have options. You can do the manual approach. You can bring in the Chrome policy remover for backup, or you can just be really smart about what you download and you know stay updated. Exactly. And when it comes down to it, that's really what it's all about, right? Yeah. Having the information and the tools that you need to be online safely and feel good about it. Well said. Well, on that note, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into the wild world of Chrome policies. I agree. But here's a little something to think about, a little food for thought. What other parts of your digital life could benefit from a little spring cleaning? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe your inbox? Yes. Social media accounts? All of it. It's amazing what a little digital decluttering can do for your peace of mind. Until next time, happy and safe browsing. <laughs>